Hello everyone and good morning, good afternoon or even perhaps good evening. Uh, welcome everyone to this month's front and functional group update. Um, uh, I will try to dive in directly. If someone has questions, please post them in the chat or just directly jump in. Um, let's get started. Um, what can I tell you about what is happening in the front end team? The big thing that was already teased and announced last time is the big team structure update. So uh, since last time we have now uh, two teams in the department for the front end. Uh, so the discussion front end team is led by Andre. And we have a team which is uh, going over monitoring, distribution, packaging, which is led by Clement. Um, the, the rest of the team at the moment stays flat, but it's really the target that we uh, scale in that area so that we have uh, in the near future also more teams. Um, what we have already done in the last release cycle and also this release cycle is that now these uh, team managers are taking over all the uh, estimations, uh, all the planning, etc and also all our domain experts. So the assigned developers that are currently not in a specific team are also taking over these tasks to actually uh, take a look at issues, estimate them, etc., and help with the whole planning. So I'm really happy about these changes and it's, uh, it's, it's really a big, uh, nice change that is currently working really well. Um, the future scaling of these teams is really to have everything structured in sub teams um, and scale especially vertically uh, so which means more areas and especially also more members per team and also horizontal as well to have more teams uh, in the near future uh, the hiring goal for this quarter is four and another one who was already hired in q2 is uh, starting on the 15th of august uh, the target is really to have one more per uh, team and the two uh, more hires for the rest of the team. Currently our pipeline, and that is something we are uh, very happy about, is, is really full. So we had, without any promotions, without anything, just 300 applicants in like two and a half weeks or so. And we are trying to uh, get through them. And thanks a lot for, uh, to Nadia for, for all her help on that. Um, something that I also want to share this time is really our knowledge sharing and that is something uh, I can really uh, not uh, you can't overestimate this uh, I think this is helping us a lot especially in the in the hiring area so uh, the front end team and this is something I'm very proud of is writing a lot of blog posts a lot, about a lot of topics that are about front end uh, stuff but also are about global topics about culture stuff etc um, we have a lot of people on the front end team that are giving talks. So just in the last plus minus two months, uh, Philipp, uh, Philippa, Fati, Clement, Vinny, Lucas, and myself uh, are giving uh, talks uh, around the world. And it's really easy to find a front end team member near you. Um, and the, the big thing about it is I think it, uh, it's great to go out there and share what we have learned because uh, personally, I've also learned a lot in the past from other people who shared stuff. Um, it gives you a huge motivation boost to simply meet uh, people who are using our software to, to hear what they like, to hear perhaps what they don't like. And it also helps you to reflect and step out of the game sometimes. It exposes uh, GitLab a lot. And uh, I, can, I can tell you, you get a lot of love back from the community most of the time uh, that they are really happy uh, to tell you how they're using it, etc. And a big plus, as I already said, is in hiring. So I've heard a ton of times uh, in our interviews that they had read this blog post or this blog post or they have seen Philippe on this conference uh, or have seen uh, Clement talking there so that definitely helps um, so just as a sharing to other teams Q3 OKRs uh, is really focused uh, on one hand on performance we are currently defining those the uh, idea is to have 10 overall improvements on the performance side for the front end and five improvements for the discussion team and to integrate 10 UI components uh, by the uh, MDP team. So that means really uh, boosting performance and especially productivity. We think that uh, by using the reusable components that I'm getting to now, uh, that will really boost our productivity in our whole pipeline. Um, and that's the main major part that also happened uh, now and was finished in the last week is really the, the Bootstrap 4 conversion. What does this mean? We can now use Bootstrap View. So this is a base uh, view component library as we don't want to reinvent the wheel. 
and start creating label button alert boxes etc we really want to reuse the library and concentrate on building gitlab stuff as mentioned in the last time um, there were some obstacles during the bootstrap 4 upgrade as it was a really huge framework upgrade on uh, i think 700 to 800 different routes um, we have learned a lot out of it uh, and really to uh, to identify for the next time we are doing such an upgrade that to to involve um, more people also from other engineering teams and have it really also on more uh, on a more public instance so that we can actually test and see stuff with more eyes on it. Um, there are also here uh, the link the retrospective notes so you can also have a deeper look there. Um, the next big steps are now to get to a first iteration of our GitLab UI components. The idea is to take three of the view bootstrap components and three of our already existing, and I think we have around 40 or 50 existing uh, view components that we already have built ourselves. And we now want to bring them to a next level so that they are self-documenting, that they are fully tested on a visual regression level, et cetera, et cetera, that we have a really nice workflow. And that is now the next big step here. Uh, the idea is really to encapsulate the, the view bootstrap components. Why uh, would you ask? Why are you asking? Uh, because we want to have an abstraction layer in there where we can set our own defaults. If it's necessary at some point to simply take, for example, the model that was integrated by Bootstrap View and uh, exchange it to with another model library or another model component, so that we have really that we are not getting the situation from, from the past that we have suddenly a couple of uh, drop-down libraries, et cetera. We are really then are able to mitigate such changes and, and have a nice uh, uh, a way for architecting those things. The idea is to encapsulate them, expose them, self-documented, uh, and then uh, uh, publish them through a GitLab UI MPM package. And this MPM package is then reintegrated and reimported into GitLab CE and EE, and then those components can be used there. Uh, and we want to have a really, and we're working very closely with VX so that we uh, find a nice combination, a nice merge between uh, the design.gitlab.com and our new components, our new dynamic components, so that we have something where every developer from the front end team can go, have a look, okay, this is a progress bar, take this code, these are the attributes, that's what you can use. You see it directly, you can play around with it. If you paste it in your code, you have snippets for it and off you go. And this will definitely boost our productivity in our whole uh, uh, development workflow. If you want to follow along, uh, please, that's the uh, link Clement uh, uh, is, has posted, is the epic about the UI components. Feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, Clement is leading the, the whole uh, uh, UI component part, uh, but yeah get around in the Slack channel and ask questions if you have, if something comes up later. And now I will want to hand over to Andre, who is uh, actually has done and, and followed up uh, on one of our biggest topics in the last week, which was the merge request refactoring merge. So Andre, please take it from here. Thanks, Tim. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to try to summarize the current status of the merge request refactoring. Um, so, um, first of all, let's, let's look at why we did it. We, we've covered this uh, recently, but I want everyone to be on the same page. So the, whole, the, the overall goal is to improve the performance of the merge request page. We were having slow pages in, in large merge, re merge requests and the way it was built it was the old architecture using Haml and we wanted to have a more modern stack behind it. Um, that will allow us to create more interactions and more manageable updates to the UI provided by the view update. Um, we, all, we also want the ability to build more complex features with Vue with less effort. One of the examples of that uh, is the batch comments slash reviews that we're, we're going to build right after this uh, re refactoring. And more than that, by having this, this uh, um, very important components built with Vue allow us to then reuse them anywhere we need them. So that is, is also a very good point to on why we did this. Now, one of the things that we've, we can already share that we've learned and we've already shared that on the last FGU, Tim already mentioned this, is the big learning is that we're never going to approach a refactoring in this way. And this might sound obvious now, but, but going through it the way it evolved, we reached a stage where the merge request where we were working on this had 559 commits 
200 plus files changed and you stayed open for nine for, for four months in 13 days sorry this means that it, it, we were dealing with daily conflicts with master and reviewing such a, a bulk of work uh, was only possible in turns and, and it, it made review harder one of the things or some of the things i've already learned or that we know how we can do better and want to share with you all is we want to whenever we we tackle such a big refactoring in the future we want to make sure that it's possible to continue continuously merge the master from the start that means that we'll be developing the new code base in parallel with the old um establishing new routes while developing and then hot swapping when done and a very key factor to allow this will be feature flags that would allow us to slow roll out this to the GitLab team first. We would catch the majority of the regressions, kind of like the Pareto principle, 80% uh, with 20% effort before we made the feature general availability. And then after that has been prepared, we will remove the deprecated code. So now we want to share the results so far, what we've seen with the, with the performance tools that we've been using. And I'll tell you the whole story. So first of all, the, the notice, the, the most noticeable change that we've had is since we removed the bulk of the contents of the page, which was the tabs uh, to be loaded later asynchronously, the first visual change on the page has significantly become faster. This means that we've deferred the data loading to after the first pane and the, 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 the site speed um, tool that we're using to track this instantly noticed this when we deployed. So we noticed around 65% of improvement in the first visual change on the page. This is important for the, to read the description. Of course, we know that the use cases with these pages you, goes for, for the description of the merge request, but also to the discussion. So there's, there's two heavy, two, two weights there. The other metric that it all was also improved slightly uh, less, but also improved significantly was the, the, fa the fully loaded page, the way the site speed measures it. Moving on, so um, here we, we have um, a dashboard that shows the, the overall the metrics for performance for one particular merge request page, which was a significant merge request um, that we had several complaints in the past by using the Haml, it was taking over 15 seconds to load, uh, and uh, we're now getting a first visual page at three seconds. This is a significant performance on the first visual change, but what we're seeing is that we still have a lot of uh, performance issues after the page load, specifically for medium to large merge requests that we're still tackling, and I'll be covering those issues uh, right after this. So you can see this right there on the on the right hand side. There's the relative to last month. So pretty much all the metrics are significant to this page. Improved for the first impression, which is incredibly important for the perceived performance of this page. So if we could, if we could go back to the slides now, um, Lucas has also um, created, um, he's tracking the evolution of the document size on the merge request page. And he shares here the evolution of this. We can see how the, the, the load in kilobytes is becoming leaner and leaner, which is what we want. But this is only part of the story. Uh, and we're, we're, we're completely aware of that. And we are focused, focusing on improving not only these metrics of the first paint, but the overall performance of the page. That's the one. <laughs> so, like I said, a lot of work still to be done. We we are aware that once we released, there was um, unfortunately quite uh, a, a number of, of issues, particularly due to performance, specifically with with large merge requests. So, several situations, the experience is not yet acceptable, and we've been labeling them as so. Specifically with large um, merge requests, there are situations where the page would would um, lock the UI. Uh, because of the complexity of the DOMs of the DOM of the page. We have been signaling all the regressions in features that have happened due to the refactoring and we're doing our best to prioritize the fixes to go into the 1101 final version. Uh, so the labels that, that we wanted to for you all to be aware is we're labeling every issue regarding the merge request refactor and regressions with the label MR refactor. And the evolution so far, we've had um, 9S1, which is a blocker severity regression, 
they are closed and we have one still in the open working on that as we speak. And just to give you a highlight of how focused we are on performance, we're tracking performance specifically, making incremental changes to the architecture of the code of the view, the view components to make it even faster. If you want, you can follow the board evolution at the link. And just looking ahead, um, there are, we have a lot in store and a lot planned to keep iterating and to keep improving the results of this page. So first, we have already a planned upcoming feature which is based on this refactoring and is it's allowed by this refactor which is the first iteration of the batch comments for 11.2 that's the issue but also we have in line a bunch of performance improvements i'll, I'll just cover a few for 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 example um, we wanted the further rendering of items further down the page so if we want to sh we want to render the first initial comments the first initial diffs right away but we can defer the rendering of the of the item the items down the list to later uh, moment. We are considering also putting virtualized scrolling in view so that at any given moment we would not have the entire set of elements on the DOM and we get to to, to have a lighter DOM which will benefit any everything from scrolling to reaction in terms of of interaction, adding new comments and everything. We also want to optimize all the libraries that have been causing some issues regarding uh, rendering times and locking the, the reflow of the page. Um, specifically, one of them is the auto sizing text areas code is causing a bit of issues on that front. And one of, one of the last improvements we want to make, you want to transition from using JavaScript to position things on the page, which is for now necessary to, or was until now necessary to implement the sticky behavior, but we can refactor that into CSS. That's also on our list. And if you want to read a bit more in detail the performance analysis that we've been doing on this, there's a, a write-up document linked at the bottom of the slide. Please read it. And uh, now there's some questions. Tim, yeah. take it away. Thanks Mark, Andre, uh, for the summary. Uh, questions? Next time I will bring some elevator music. Uh, so <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, then I will try to add one more thing. Is really that, that the performance thing is uh, it's 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 fantastic for us for to have now everything to bring it to this big uh, step that we have it now in view, and especially being able to reuse stuff between issues, uh, merge requests, and even the web ID. So there are a couple of components that are reused and. Each improvement that we do will also benefit, uh, be, will be beneficiary for all those areas. So um, that's, a, that's a big step for us and coming then in with the GitLab UI component libraries, that's, that's really awesome to see and looking forward to work with those things. Yeah, then. Uh, Tim, I, I, let me just address the question that Philippa has in the chat. She asks, the performance in the first release candidate before regressions were fixed was actually decreased I'm curious if we have metrics for that and if you plan to make them public. Um, so the metrics have been gathered and, and we will look at site speed looking for that. And we, we do plan to have a more concrete um, summary after all of this is done. So we will, of course, share everything with the public. We are running a, a retrospective on this as well. So every, every metric that we have, you will eventually hear about it. Um, watch this space. And coming back to slide four, uh, we will most probably also make a blog post about our findings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and share share that with the view world. Do we plan to also share the amount of regressions and why they were added? Because I thought this was a great update, but I don't think it actually reflects the state of of what we have right now. Uh, we have more than twenty P ones, not just nine as one. So I'm wondering, do we plan to actually um, share publicly everything that went wrong and what yeah, we yeah. can learn from that? Definitely, we have that uh, first of all on, on a board. Uh, we have also a, a retrospective. We uh, had even close talks with, by example, with Mac about uh, how we can uh, have a best, better test coverage on those things and also especially bring this in a, not so big step way to to the public uh, and 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 really because as this was a topic that was developed over so long time 
uh, that, yeah, uh, we definitely have uh, things that we can improve and learn from that also from that side. Thanks. Cool. Then I'm closing this one and I really want to thank everyone on the front end team. Uh, thanks everyone, especially also Fatih for doing and, and pulling through this merge request refactoring. Thanks Andre for your first uh, uh, FTU update with me and thanks to the rest for jumping in uh, and helping on the merge request refactor and all the other topics. Everyone else, have a nice day. See you soon in the team call.